This is the first video on numerical methods. Now throughout GCSE and A-level you've learned lots of different algebraic methods for solving equations. Whether it's by factorising using the factor theorem, whether it's by using the quadratic formula or completing the square, uh, whether it's just simply rearranging um, and using inverse operations to make something the subject, or using calculus. You've got lots of different algebraic methods to solve some problems. However, there will be some problems you come across where you don't have the algebraic method to solve it yet. So it's very important that you know some numerical methods, um, of some numerical ways of solving these problems. Now you already know one, the trial and improvement, you've done that in the lower school. But these are the other techniques you're going to learn more about in your A-level. Uh, so first of all, location of roots, which is what this video is all about. Then iterations, um, the newton matheson method, and the Trapezium rule. So, location of roots. Basically, if I've got a function and we're looking for a change in sign on a set interval. If we have a change in sign and our function is continuous, then we have been able to locate where a root will be. So what I mean here is, looking at this function here, I can see that when x is minus 1, my function is negative. And I can see that when x is plus 1, my function is positive which means that at some point between minus 1 and 1, there must be a root. It must pass through 0. Similarly, I can see that um, when x here is 1, my y value is positive. When x is 2, my y value is negative. And so at some point between 1 and 2, there must be a root. That so this is what we mean by looking at um, the location of roots. We're looking for a sign change between two values. So for example, <clears throat> here I've got the function x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 1. And I want to show that there is going to be a root between 1.4 and 1.5. So I can see here that the root, <clears throat> there is a root between 1 and 2. But I want to be more specific than that. I want to show that it's between 1.4 and 1.5. So, what we're looking for is a sign change. So if I substitute each of these uh, values x into my function, so f of 1.4 would be 1.4 cubed minus 4 times 1.4 squared plus plus uh, 3 times 1.4 plus 1 uh, I really should have checked first um, and we get 0 0.104 the actual size, the actual number here doesn't matter too much. The important thing is, it is positive. Right, what about when x is 1.5? So we go back up here now and change our x is to 1.5. So substituting 1.5 into the function. And we get minus 0.125. It is negative. So, we have seen that there's been a sign change between 1.4 and 1.5, which means that at some point between there, at some point between 1.4 and 1.5, there must be, it must be equal to zero at some point between those two numbers. So I have shown that there's a root between there. So all I would do now is I'd say, Sign change. So y equals zero at some point in the interval one point four to one point five. Okay, so really important you finish this uh, question off with a sentence, because otherwise this is just some calculations. You need to actually say what those calculations actually mean. So really important to finish this off with a sentence, otherwise you won't get the mark. Now, there's a, a few complications that you need to be aware of. Firstly, 
Um, for example, here, um, if I was to substitute a into this function, I'd get a positive number up there. If I was to substitute b into this function, I'd get a negative number. So you might think, okay, sign change between a and b. So there must be a root in between a and b. But as we can see from this diagram, there's actually one, two, three roots in between uh, a and b here. So you'll, you might have noticed when I showed this uh, on the board a couple of moments ago, it says at least one root. So when you get a sign change, there will be at least one root. It might be one root, as it was here, between 1.4 and 1.5. Or actually, you might get more than one root. You just need to be aware of that. That can happen, depending on what A and B are. Obviously, if I chose a narrower interval, rather than going from A all the way over to B, if I chose my interval as being from A to B here, then you can see we just have one root in that smaller interval. So obviously the wider the interval, the more chance you will get of capturing more roots within it. So just be aware of that. Also be aware of a case like this, where you can see my interval a to b is there, and substituting a into my function gives me a negative number there, and substituting b into my function gives me a negative number. So between A and B, there's not been a sign, sign change. However, that's just because the interval is so wide. If the interval was between A and B there, there would be a sign change. Because we can see there is actually two loops here. Whereas with the original interval that I chose between A and B there and there, I didn't get a sign change. They're both negative values, which might suggest, if you're thinking about it purely numerically, that there's not a root, but we can see clearly there is. Final thing to be careful about is if the function is not continuous, if there is an asymptote in between. Again, you'll have seen from this definition that the function must be continuous for, this, uh, for there to be a sign change and to imply a root. So, if the function is continuous, so if the function is not continuous, you can see, when I substitute A in here, you might think, oh, it's positive. When I substitute B in, it's negative. So there's a sign change. However, there is no roots in between A and B. This curve does not pass through, a, uh, pass through zero at all. So there is no roots here, even though there is a sign change. And that's because it is not continuous, it is discontinuous. So, a few things to be careful about there. Right, let's do another example. So, it says, using the same axes, sketch the graphs of y equals L n x and y equals 1 over x, and explain how your diagram shows that the function f of x equals L n x minus 1 over x has only one root. So, set of axes. I know what ln x looks like. ln x looks like that, going through the point 1, 0 there. And I know what 1 over x looks like. 1 over x looks like this. So how does that show that there is only one root this equation. Well, lnx minus 1 over x, that would have a root that would equal 0 when these two curves are equal to each other. When lnx equals 1 over x. And I can see that they cross over at only one point. So I would now uh, divide a sentence here and say, my graphs intersect at only one point, therefore the function ln x minus 1 over x will have only one root. Part B. Show that this root lies in the interval of 1.7 to 
So, I need to show that ln x minus 1 over x has got a root between these values. So I'm looking for a sign change between 1.7 and 1.8. So, substitute 1.7 into the function, and I'll get ln 1.7 minus 1 over 1.7. which gives a minus 0.06 to two decimal places, so that is negative. Now I'll substitute 1.8 into my function. And obviously I'm looking for a positive now, and that's exactly what I get. Okay, now I'm going to finish off with the sentence that we always finish these questions off with. There has been a sign change in, now I'm actually, based, given that we now uh, know a little bit more about some issues that can come up, I'm going to improve on the sentence that I wrote before. I'm going to improve on it by saying there has been a sign change in the continuous function because from what we've just seen we know that the for a sign change to Im imply that there is a root it must be a continuous function. A sign change by itself doesn't necessarily mean that there is definitely a root as we saw here, because if it's dis discontinuous, there might not be a root. So I'm, I'm improving this, the sentence I wrote before by saying there's been a sign change in the continuous function, um, so there must be a root. Given that the root of f of x is alpha, I need to show that alpha is actually 1.763, correct to three decimal places. Okay. So in part b, I showed that the answer is going to be between 1.7 and 1.8. The question is now telling me that actually the answer to three decimal places is 1.763, and I need to prove that. So, to do that, what we're going to do, uh, let me make this a bit bigger, because I think it sums it up nicely. Yeah. So the 1.763, if I can show that um, there is a sign change in the interval from its lower bound up to the upper bound. So I'm going to consider the lower bound of uh, the 1.763. And I'm going to consider the upper bound. By using those two numbers, if I can show that there is a sign change between them, then that must mean that the answer, the root, is going to lie in between the lower bound and the upper bound. And if the answer lies between the lower bound and the upper bound, then it must round to 1.763, to two decimal, uh, three decimal places. So with these questions where they ask to show um, that an answer is correct to a certain number of decimal places, like it's saying here, what you always do is you consider the lower bound and the upper bound of that number, and then you look for the sign change. Because that says that the uh, solution will be between those two numbers, and if the solution is between those two numbers, then it must round to that. So, same, same idea as before, I would substitute 1.762. Substitute my lower bound into my function, 
which would be ln 1.7625 minus 1 over 1.7625. which gives uh, minus 0 0.006. Uh, the, the calculator gives it in standard form. Remember, all I'm interested in is actually showing that it's negative. Then substitute the upper bounding, so 1.7635. which is positive. And to finish this off with a sentence, there has been a sign change in the continuous function. So there must be a uh, root between uh, the 1.7625 and the 1.7635. Therefore, the solution will round to 1.763 to three decimal places. Because if it's between the upper bound and the lower bound, the root somewhere in between there, it's got to round to 1.763 1 to 1 because all of the numbers in this interval do round to 1.763. So whenever you get a question like this, um, oh, where's it gone? Like this, you're going to consider the interval of the lower bound to the upper bound. So for example here, it says given that the root of f of x is alpha, show that alpha equals 2.351 correct three decimal places. What I would do is I would consider the lower bound of this and the upper bound of this. So the lower bound would be 2.3505. The upper bound would be 2.3515. I'd substitute this into my function. I substitute this into my function, show that there is a sign change, and then write the sentence that I just wrote. So this is all about the location of roots and how um, we can find those by looking for a sign change on an interval.